The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus is the cheapest it's ever been. And at under $350, I just had to grab it and see what the fuss is all about. I mean, this phone has been one of the most popular Redmi phones on the market and I guess for a reason. So today we're gonna be testing its gaming, performance, camera and everything else that this phone has to offer. So is it actually worth it? Well, let's get started and find out. Starting off with the unboxing experience and you get your phone with a nice plain case for it and a massive 120 watt charger with its USB Type-C cable and that charger is frankly one of the best selling points for this phone. Now fast forward two weeks and here are my opinions on this device and what you can expect starting from the build quality. Now this phone is offered in a glass bag and a vegan leather one but for some reason I couldn't find the vegan leather and so here I have the glass one. This one weighs around 204 grams and has Gorilla Glass Victus on the front and a curved display which gives it a really premium feel in the hand. And somehow it's not a fingerprint magnet which is something that I love. And somehow they have managed to put an IP68 dust and water resistance uh, at this price point which is something that I'm seeing for the first time actually. I never believed that a phone this cheap can actually get IP68. But my thoughts overall is that the design is kind of nice, especially with this camera bump on the back and it gives it a really premium feel. So one thing that I really don't like is the case, I think it's pretty ugly in my opinion, especially how it makes the phone look. But it gives you a basic protection and you definitely don't want to break that back glass. So just slap it on until you buy something better, it definitely does the job. The inbuilt fingerprint scanner is fast and responsive, I had zero issues with it so far and I usually like these compared to the ones that you put on the side, it gives a more premium feel to the phone. Speaking about this gorgeous AMOLED display, we have a 6.67 inch HDR10 plus 120Hz display and it's curved. So this is something that I really like, it again gives this phone a very premium feel despite it being just under $350. The resolution is 1220 by 2712 and the pixel density is around 446 ppi. With a maximum of 1800 nits of brightness, you would have zero issues using this during the day. And when it comes to the viewing experience itself, I find the colors pretty pleasant. I find the saturation, the details and everything else just on point, like another gorgeous display from Xiaomi. And this is packed with Dolby Vision as well, so you're getting the full experience. And when it comes to the sound, you have dual speakers on the bottom and on the top and they produce a clear and loud sound. So here is a quick recording so you can hear for yourself. But enough of that, what can you actually see inside of this big boy here? Well, once you put the headset on, you'll be greeted by two displays, each with a resolution of 2064 by 2208 pixels with a maximum of 120Hz refresh rate, which is awesome and way better than what the Meta Quest 2 had to offer. Now, before we continue, I would like to quickly mention the sponsor of this video, Fast Comet. Now, Fast Comet is a hosting company that you can use to create your own websites, from blogs to shops to literally any type of project that you might have. And I know that because I'm using them myself. They offer an amazing 24-7 customer and technical support that you can rely on. They are cheaper than most bigger hosting companies out there like GoDaddy, SiteGround and Bluehost. So make sure to give them a try from the link in my description below and that way you can also support me as a creator. Now let's get back into the video. When it comes to the software, we still have the old MIUI 14 slapped on top of Android 14. However, this phone will receive the new Hyper OS update very very soon and Xiaomi promises 3 years of Android updates and 4 years of security patches. But let's be honest, by that time you would have probably switched to another phone already. Another annoying thing is that the phone comes pre-installed with a bunch of bloatware, which is frankly super annoying, but they can be easily uninstalled, so not a big problem. Now these minor inconveniences aside, I really love that MIUI has such a wide selection of themes and unfortunately the Hyper OS, the newer update, doesn't have so many themes so I hope that uh, Xiaomi is gonna add more in the future, so I'm looking forward to that. So far so good, but how about the performance? Well, in this little device they have packed in a MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Ultra and in my opinion it's not one of the best chipsets. Here is where Xiaomi decided to cut some costs and it's expected, I mean everything about this phone is amazing but the CPU is not one of the best and it shows. 
uh, during this benchmark benchmark scores I couldn't get more than 700,000 points on Antutu and fortunately at least the phone didn't get hot during this so that's a plus. And how does this translate when it comes to gaming? Well, not one of the best experiences here on Genshin Impact, which is one of the most intense games ever. So while you cannot play this game in the highest settings, you can lower them to something like medium, keep the frame rate to 60, reduce some shadows uh, and other shenanigans like that, mess around a little bit and I'm sure that you're gonna get a pretty nice experience. I have tried this and it was a more or less smooth frame rate, around 45 to 50 and that combined with the game center from Shea Xiaomi is boosting your FPS even further. Now I think that the Xiaomi Game Center is one of the best ever created and it optimizes your device really really good so it, you can squeeze like the maximum performance out of this CPU. With the 5000mAh of battery this phone will last you at least 6 hours of screen on time and with the 120W charger you are back to 100% in around 20 minutes. And when it comes to other games like PUBG or some other shooters then the frame rate will be pretty stable, I haven't experienced any issues and I even bumped the settings up to the maximum or I mean almost the maximum as much as this device allows me to. And the frame rate is pretty stable, always 60 FPS. I suck at the game though. When it comes to the camera system, Xiaomi have managed to stack a 200 megapixel Samsung lens as the primary one, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro camera that nobody asks for, but it keeps getting included. Well, as you can see here, there are plenty of modes that you can choose from, but unfortunately there are no Leica lenses on this phone, and unlike uh, some other phones from Xiaomi, so that's a bit of a bummer. But enough of that. Here are some of the photos I took with the phone and I must say that the best lens would be of course the primary Samsung one and the photos turn out sharp with lots of details, the colors are also natural with some slight saturation slapped from Xiaomi's uh, software processing and this camera lacks in many departments as expected from a device in this price range, however it's one of the best especially when you compare it to other similarly priced phones. You can be sure that you will get a nice result almost every single time, at least from the primary lens. Now the ultra wide is a little bit of a different deal and we are not even gonna talk about the macro one. That lens is a little bit uh, useless. But uh, now I also have to know that there is the AI camera mode in the settings and that can and will ruin some photos for you because it oversaturates and overexposes almost anything. Some people might like that, personally I just like to turn this feature off and edit my photos later. But the selfie lens is also a decent at 16 megapixels and while this can turn out a little bit soft, they are definitely perfectly usable as long as the light is not absolute dog shit. And speaking about bad light, there comes the night time and during the night time the results are not great. As you can see here the phone tends to make everything super yellowish, but I mean that's expected. I still got some really nice shots during the night and even though there's a lot of grain going on here and there, I think that they're still pretty good considering this phone is just under 350 bucks. And the front camera is also not different, the selfies are a little bit soft, but maybe in a city center with more city lights you're gonna get better results. Still I would love to hear your opinions on this, so hit me up down in the comments and tell me what you think about this phone. And if you liked the video so far and I have given you some sort of value then I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and I will make sure to make even more amazing and better videos for you guys and let's proceed with video quality. Now when it comes to the video recording that is capped at 4K 30fps so no 60fps here unfortunately and I actually like how these videos turn out if only there wasn't this annoying jitter while you are walking it would have been perfect. But anyway the colors and details seem ok, the stabilization is also really great I just can't help to notice these jitters. So these videos are here definitely outperform many other smartphones in this price category but there is still a lot of room for improvement and I hope that Xiaomi fixes uh, these uh, kind of little bugs in future updates and makes the overall experience more complete. So I'm out here in nature and this is the front facing video quality of the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus. We're gonna stick with the Redmi, too long of a name. And so I think that it has great details and the colors are pretty accurate but this guy here, mm -mm, this guy here is too white. As you can see not handling that dynamic range well 
but at this price range can you ask for more if you're out and about vlogging and you just doing your regular stuff I think that it's fine but if you want something more professional uh, this definitely not one the one for you it's just there are better options out there all right so this is the selfie video quality during the night and uh, oh my god there's bells nearby I forgot about that so I'm using 1080p 30 FPS because the camera actually lets in a little bit more light but even uh, if I'm doing that uh, the results are not are not so pretty so yeah definitely not the best during the night time but I think it's still usable to some extent during night time is the same story as with the photos and provided you have some nice city or street lights you can get some nice footage but otherwise there is a lot of grain and I wouldn't recommend you shooting anything at night now to sum it all up I think that the main camera lens of this phone is phenomenal I just love how the photos turn out and the video quality seems great with some minor hiccups here and there but I believe that this phone is still a great value and I would definitely recommend it to anyone that's looking for a budget device and uh, actually wants like 80 to 90% of the functionalities of other flagship phones. So there you have it guys, the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus, an amazing device, an amazing value for money, arguably one of the best in the market right now and especially when it comes to that main camera sensor, the Samsung camera sensor, like this phone has almost everything that you would want in a smartphone but it lacks in the department of the performance so if you would like to do some gaming maybe look somewhere else maybe look at something like the Poco X6 Pro and I have also made a review about this phone I'll link it right here thanks as always for watching and have a wonderful day guys bye